So good evening all. Here I'll be starting one of the exciting session and that is very important for all testers and specifically selenium or you can say web tester. Now those guys who are into this training field or who are into learning field, they would like to know how to test as well as those guys who are the software developers, they would like to know how to test using Selenium, using the free tool like Selenium. Now, in this, we'll understand what the Selenium is all about, how to install the Selenium, how to use a Selenium API, and specifically Python Selenium API. Now, let me start this session now let me tell you before we start before before the session we have conducted one more session and that was the basic about automation testing in that session i have covered about unit testing test cases differences between the manual testing and automation testing and also wrote a test case as well as test suit so this was about our previous agenda those who are not seen this uh, particular, those who are not attended this workshop, I request them to go through that workshop. That recording is also available. Now, we're focusing here on today's workshop, and that is Python for automation testing, and that too, web automation testing. First thing first, what is today's agenda now? Today's agenda is to understand first what the Selenium is all about. Then, to understand the installation part, as well as we're also, we'll understand like the, what the web driver or the components are there. We'll also understand various Selenium component in this case. And we'll try to do basic hands-on, or maybe I can say I'll be giving certain demo in today's session. Today, our object is to have an introduction to Selenium. We'll not be going into the advanced part of the Selenium in this particular workshop. For advanced part of the Selenium, we'll be taking it in the next session. That is also scheduled on the 5th of September. Now, first thing again, like what the Selenium is all about now? Because most of the companies are discussing about Selenium. And why they are talking about Selenium? What is the reason behind it? Let me tell you one of the main reason, or the, you can say the main objective why Selenium the Selenium is open source and free. You do not require to buy license for the Selenium. And as you do not require to buy, it's available for everyone, all the companies, all the types of developers, even the students, learners, whoever would like to use it. So one thing is like, why? This is open source and it is free. So open source means here it is available on the GitHub also. You can customize it or some of the API here now. And you can be a part of development team also. Now this is the, the main tool available for web automation testing. I'm not just saying the automation testing because here the focus is web automation testing. Now most of the company, they are having e-commerce applications or you can say the some file, uh, applications which are related to businesses. Now all these applications, whichever you're developing for all that, Automation testing is the need. Why? We need to check how the each and every element of the wave is working or not, whether it is functioning or not, we need to check it. So how to check each and every element of the wave application, how to make sure that all the features of wave applications are running or not, for that here we are learning Selenium which is freely available. Now, how does the Selenium help us? Selenium help us for many things, like it helps for validating the web applications. Also, it helps to test it on various browsers and various platforms. That is very, very important to know, like it is not just for specific device or specific ap applications. It is widely available for all the types of browsers and also available for all the types of platform now. Now, when you say all the types of platform, what does it mean? Here means it could be a Windows 
based operating system, could be a Linux based operating system, could be Mac based operating system. So it doesn't matter which platform you're talking about or which device you're talking about. Not only the desktop devices or laptop devices, you can test also mobile application devices. And that's the beauty about this Selenium now. You're getting something free and allows you to testing on all the devices, as well as on the all the browsers, as well as on the, you can say all the types of operating system. And that's why the Selenium is becoming popular in most of the languages. I'm not talking about just one language here. I'm talking about most of the language, not only the languages also in the browser now. Why I'm saying also in the browser that also you'll come to know very soon. Now, before you dive into the Selenium browser or Selenium web driver, let us have some components. What are the Selenium components? What are there? Which are the four components are there in the Selenium? The one of the components which is freely available and it is available along with the browser also. That also we are going to check it and that is nothing but the Selenium ID. So you can also install this Selenium ID as a plugin on the browser. And this browser, we are going to discuss in more detail about it, that you can have on the Firefox or you can have on the Chrome, which are the most popular browsers. So now this is something which we'll be discussing in detail, what the Selenium ID is all about. Then the Selenium remote control component. Now, let me tell you Selenium remote control components, or again, this is a, a remote control things where it is a server now, it's a web server remote. You are going to test uh, through certain web server. Now we'll understand what exactly RC and now it is deprecated. That also you'll know like what the Selenium RC is all about and why it is deprecated in the new version of the Selenium because it is already added in the Selenium web driver now. Now, the next component, which is our main component of today's session, and that is Selenium web driver. We understand the benefit of Selenium web driver and here we'll be using the Python based Selenium web driver. Next thing is we have a Selenium grid. We'll understand what exactly the Selenium grid is. When to use a Selenium grid? Is it a necessary for us? So that also will understand the benefits and when all these things we'll understand in this session itself. So firstly, understand the concept part and then we'll have the some hands-on part of the Selenium now. Now, how the Selenium components are organized. So this is the way the Selenium components, Selenium suits include the Selenium ID, Selenium RC. Now it is merged into Selenium 2 version also and the latest version, it is already available now. So you do not require to install it separate component. And also, as I said, our major thing is like Selenium web driver, which, which has a various version and we are working on the latest version now, Selenium 3 also. So we'll see that what exactly and the Selenium grid. Now, who is the person behind this? Obviously we should know at least the person who has developed this Selenium now. The person who started the development as an open source platform is a Jason Huggins in 2004. And he was working as an engineer in a ThoughtWorks. First, firstly, the name was not the Selenium and all. It was just like a, a Selenium core component, like the name was JavaScript runner. But then gradually, obviously, like there is a history behind it. I'm not uh, covering the detailed history here, but yes, this is the way it started and it started from the 2004 itself. Now, first thing first, and what is that? What is the Selenium ID is all about? And let me tell you, this is the ID which is available along with the browser. It's a browser plugin. ID is what? Integrated development environment. Most of the times, you see like there are few developers are available. Now we don't, we don't have developer now. This is our uh, requirement. Like now we want to test the website, but don't have developer. What should we do now in that case? So Selenium has created one ID for you. In case you do not have development skill, no problem. You can go for the Selenium ID and still test your website. May not be in the depth, but then yes, a lot of things can be tested and also the test report can be generated. This is all. You can try it out. Just Google the Selenium ID on your browser and see, install the plugin and just use it. It is just playing. It's so easy and you'll come to know like that if you try to use it, maybe uh, I will show the demo later, not now, but then let me tell you, this is the very, very easy tool to start with. 
having having a basic knowledge of, let's say you do not have the uh, more knowledge about selenium and you do not have the development knowledge let's say you don't have knowledge about the, let's say some languages like java or the python or in any other languages my re uh, recommendation for those will be go for the selenium id then because with the help of selenium id also you can also automate so uh, you can also do some testing part of your web component so we'll understand the the benefits and the limitations which are there for the selenium id so what we can do with the help of selenium and what we cannot do that we need to understand then as i said selenium id is a simplest framework to start with you can have the recording of whatever the testing you have done manually let's say you have done you did a manually one complete testing and then that recording will be done and you can play with it so how does the, here there is no programming but then yes what is there whatever you should have the manual testing skill here at least you should know the testing means so if you have the manual testing skill you can go for the selenium id also so it has a playback operation available on the chrome and the firefox browser and do not require to have the programming skill here so no programming feature available in the selenium id so now what are the benefits of selenium id firstly as i said that it is very easy to install you can just download and install as a selenium id for the chrome browser or for the firefox whichever the your favorite browser is all about then second thing is it has a built in test result report module available so you do not require to uh, install any third it is already there along with the selenium id and no programming experience is required as already discussed it allows you to create and execute the test cases using this browser as i said that is the firefox and the chrome easy to record test script user can edit the test script there, there is a customization manually you can edit it and user can also create a test suite here so these are the benefit of the selenium id again recommending you to go for it try it out uh, in case you are finding some challenges i am here to help you out then then what are the limitations of the selenium id yes we should know that that is very important because then why all the developers all the companies are not going for the selenium id then there should be some reason behind it obviously there are certain limitations to understand that it has it doesn't have the support for iteration statement it doesn't have support for conditional statement doesn't have support for error handling no support for the database testing available only for these two browser which are your favorite one that is the firefox and the chrome and doesn't generate a detailed test report summary so these are the limitations and obviously like as i say like when your company is a big company and you have the the web, lot many web component and you like to test each and everything then definitely we require to go for some some other uh, selenium component that also will be discussing so i hope you understood what the selenium id is all about the benefits and the limitation now now we are going to understand the second component of the selenium here and what is the selenium second component here the second component is selenium remote control component that is rc here so let us have brief idea because we should know like this is already included in other id like uh, as a, the, the third component but then we should know because because it's a past, past and it, it was used previously and maybe some company may be using this selenium rc component uh in the old uh, maybe you can say the legacy application but let us uh, selenium you don't have the selenium rc now but in the legacy application selenium rc uh, is already available because why because now the it is deprecated officially there is no not, no more components uh, as a selenium rc in the new version older version you may get it so again it is for the web application testing supporting the programming using the remote control here support multiple browser it has it also support the multiple operating system and it's like a middleman between the selenium commands and the browser here you should have some programming skill in this case in the case of selenium remote control you, you do not you, it is not like a, it is not like selenium id where anybody can start and work no here you need to have some programming uh, skills and should know how to configure the selenium rc server and then only you can have the testing about the various selenium uh compra various web component also so what are the benefits here again i have a quick look at the benefits here the cross browser and the cross platform support is there can perform looping and conditional operation better than id in that case can support data driven testing also 
has a mature and the complete API libraries available, can readily support new browser, and it has a faster execution than the ID. So that's a, that's a benefit of RC component here, or you can say remote control component of the Selenium ID. So now what are the limitations of Selenium ID? Let me tell you that also. So here, the installation is obviously more complicated than what we saw in the previous uh, one, that is the Selenium ID. Must have programming knowledge in this case. As I say, in the previous case, like Selenium ID may not have the programming skill. Just having the manual automation skill can go for the, you can go for the uh, Selenium ID. But here, in the when you're going for the RC component, programming skill is needed. Then need to have Selenium RC server to be running here in this case, then only you can do the automation test. So you need to make sure that server is running. Like in the case of database uh, server, you need to have database server running, then only you can have database API. The same way here now. It also has an API which contains the redundant and confusing commands. These are certain limitation again. Browser interaction is a little bit less realistic and inconsistent result and uses JavaScript only. So uh, uh, it, it is something like uh, now, as I just say, like getting uh, you know connected to the web driver now. So that's why I say like it's slower execution time than the web driver. So the next component we'll be seeing, and here we are our the most important component here. We are going to uh, invest our most of our time and that is on Selenium web driver. Now I hope you understood the three components of the Selenium here, and. Now, this is the most important, I, I think two components we have seen, that this is the third component now. And the fourth one also we'll see that is uh, about the Selenium grid. So what we saw in the first two components, what are the limitations were there, how we can overcome in the third component that is very, very important for us to know. So this is the most important component that is the Selenium web driver. Let me do in this particular workshop, here I'm giving you the brief about the Selenium web driver, but the next workshop, I'll be going in a little bit of depth of the Selenium web driver. What brief have I understand here? Here we are going to understand what, are the, what is the Selenium web driver is all about. Again, uh, as I say, this is for the web application testing. So this is one of the most popular and demanding web application testing tool. It has a simple architecture compared to, if I had to compare with the, the previous component RC, it has a simple component then. And it is easy to understand and use also. So this is why this is why we should go for the Selenium web driver. And I'll tell you like even how to do hands-on using the Python Selenium web driver. Let me know here you are going to understand the lots of benefits of Selenium web drivers are there. So what are the benefits of Selenium web driver? That also we are going to understand. The architecture is very simple. Having the Selenium client installed on your machine you have the browser, yes, you have the browser and you should have the driver for that. And using the driver, you can connect to the web server also. So all these things we are going to see in the case of uh, the Selenium web driver practically also. So how, what the architecture include, it includes the well-designed object-oriented API because we have written the Python API in this case and there are object-oriented. You are going to use this web API. Let me do this web driver API, we are going to use it and they're very easy to use as long as, uh, as long as you have the knowledge about the particular language here, but yes, here there's a need of programming skill now. Like when I say the first time, when I say Selenium ID, that time say, okay, not to have programming skill is fine. But when you are going for the Selenium web driver, you need to have programming skill now. What programming skill? Now here I'm going to use, obviously support the multiple programming language as per your comfort level. You, you could go for Java, you could go for uh, some C-sharp or some other languages, but my favorite language here are those who are from the Python side, they can go for the Python scripting itself because now Python is supporting this Selenium web driver and it is very easy to use in the Python. It is object-oriented scripting language and with the help of object-oriented scripting language, it is very easy to use this API. It is developed for automating the web applications. And this Python is open source. Let me know now here there is a plus point. One thing is Python is open source language. Selenium is also open source now. You have both the things free available. That's another benefit, right? So here you can think about to go for the both free versions. Python as a free version, Selenium as a free version, and then start working for automation testing or testing your web application using both now. 
it has already overcome many more uh, what are the limitations are there for the previous component what we saw already overcome in the selenium web driver so we are going to understand now this in more detail it allows you to not only automate the web application but also mobile application testing processes now so those guys who like to test their web application on the mobile interface mobile platform go for the selenium web drivers i so this will help you a lot obviously you need to write you need to have some programming skill in this case it is faster than selenium rc component we just saw that previous to this that what the rc component is and it is a little bit complex also now in this case selenium web driver directly talk to the browser and work on the you know ask you okay now if you want to open what you want to open the site which side you want to open you are going to see practically how you are going to open it how you are going to access the various component which how you are going to access the various element so how do you access so all these thing we have to understand in the case of selenium web driver only it has a very good uh, apis more concise than the selenium rc also so the benefits there are lots of benefit but some of the benefit here simple for installations uh, communicate directly to browser now faster execution time simple installation as compared to the previous component that is a rc component you can say and uh, yes there are certain limitations we should know like what are the limitations installation is if you if you have to compare with the id yes it is a little bit complex if you have to compare with the id but if i do compare with the rc component the selenium web, web driver installation is pretty easy uh, that way you can go for the selenium web driver but again here as i said previously here you require the programming skill right so this is very important that you should first have some programming skill could be a python as re i'm recommending here because it's open source and it is object oriented high level scripting language so if you having that python skill here you will also able to see the various hands on session in this workshop as well as in the next workshop where you will see like using the python api you can test your web application quickly so it supports the the various browsers and uh, the browser driver should be compatible in this case uh, again because if it is not compatible you have to look for it and there is a solution available let me tell you uh, whenever i am installing the the selenium new installation is done i have to check every time the browser which version of browser i am using am i using the chrome then which version of chrome i am using because i need to check the compatibility of that driver with the browser if because most of the time what happen browser is getting updated automatically getting updated and you have let's say downloaded some of the old version of the let's say you you did not update your driver then in that case when you are trying to run your scape it won't work so we have to be very careful in this case you have to check which version of your driver you are using which version of uh, uh, your browser you are using based on that you should be installing the component then this is the third com uh, the fourth component we saw the three uh, three components some benefits limitation but we should know exactly that what the selenium grid is all about now so first two uh, first three component i hope you understood like we saw what the selenium id is all about second we saw about the selenium rc component means what and then we we saw the the benefits and all those things benefits and limitation of this component and this is very important because this is the fourth and the most important component and we should know when to go for selenium grid component now now here let me tell you this is the this is the component which is for running the automation test on multiple browser across multiple operating systems simultaneously so if you want to do the automation testing on not only since here there is a parallel execution the selenium grid is for the parallel execution now you want to have a multiple test cases multiple test suite at the same time so a lot of testing you are doing it's not just like one test at a one time not like that you want to do parallel execution on multiple server so here you require to have the selenium grid in that case so you require to have that kind of setup where you can do that automation test at a large scale so let me tell you this is like for the parallel testing it support the parallel testing use only for the test execution it uh, it it is it has a high speed uh, for the test suite complete because if you, as i say this is for testing multiple browser mul on a, and the different uh, you know testing you want to do it at a simultaneously then go for the selenium grid mostly big companies they they may have they are testing on the multiple uh, you know portals uh, they want to do it at a multiple server also so in that case 
obviously you can go for the selenium so this is for testing many components at the same time testing uh, so is is what you say is a uh, for the parallel execution now here i'm giving you the idea or giving you the some input like when to use selenium grid see if you are the individual developer and you are going for the testing one by one and you are the student i will not ask you to go for the selenium grid as a student you can learn it but this when you may not require to go for the selenium grid as a in the initial stage later stage you may go for because that's something your project requirement is but let me tell you now here when to use a selenium grid so selenium grid is full to check the compatibility of application on wide range of browsers and the devices on the platform so you want to have multiple browsers multiple platform at the same time if you want to go for it then go for the selenium grid now next thing is if you want to save your execution time as well as uh, of the specifically the test suit you know like what test suit because in the previous workshop we already discussed about what the test suit means test suit include various test cases as well as the test suit so it's a very big component so at the same time you are running the various functional testing now so many functions you are trying to execute and testing at the same time there i say like if you are trying to uh, test your various test suit then go for the selenium grid now it uh, for example so how it is beneficial so you can set up the selenium grid to run five tests at the same time you can also finish the execution time five times faster than the the previous whatever the the selenium component we saw so this is something to improve the performance and doing something parallelly here this is what the the selenium is all about so it support what it supports the the various operating systems uh, like windows macintosh linux and also the various browsers uh, firefox chrome internet explorer safari and many more other and also it has a support for the various programming language as i said previously support for the java c sharp dot net perl python ruby and many more so many more languages so it is not like necessary or mandatory that to use the selenium uh, web driver or selenium component you need to learn something new skill if you are expert in some language like php or java or some other language there also definitely you can go for the selenium here it support various testing framework which is there in all the languages last time we saw what the unit testing is in the python we'll be using the unit testing but yes in other languages like c sharp dot net you may use use a n unit in java j unit or test ng in php we had main <coughs> but in the python we are using unit testing and the py unit here so what are the advantage of selenium here now obviously there are several advantages i already told you and already discussed this that selenium is open source software so obviously as it is open source freely available no need to buy any license for that and also support multiple programming languages now when you say multiple programming language as i just now say that it allows you to go for your choice language not like necessary that you should be going for the specific language although i will recommend python but yes it support other programming language also support for the multiple operating system support for the multiple browser also allows you to go for the parallel testing and that's what the benefit of the selenium here now so i hope you got like the benefits of selenium and i will recommend all of you to go for and install the selenium id as well as uh, you can try for the selenium web driver i'll be telling like even how to install the selenium web driver here so that we will see in the hands on part now what are certain limitations of the selenium here now let me tell you here those guys who, who are joining here for selenium and they come up with the expectation is it for the desktop application answer is no i am not here suggesting for desktop application here not for the something which are gui based application which are desktop based application it is more it is it is specifically i am again for, uh, saying like it is for the web based application certain limitation it has a little bit difficult to test the image related applications here now let's say you want to go for the image related application your uh, selenium may not be the right tool for that it is bit uh, difficult to test the image related application 
And uh, it doesn't have the built-in report generation as a component. You may require to install some third-party report generation component for that. And doesn't test the CAPTCHA and the barcode readers here. So in case you would like to test some, uh, you know, like the how important is the security part here. So if you want to test it, so you will not be able to do using the Selenium component here. No vendor technical support. This is another very important limitation or you most of you guys like why some of the companies are not going for the Selenium is only because they are not getting the technical support. There's no, there's no, you can say someone who can say father to help you out here or some brother, okay, now this is my company and this is my product. No, 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 this is something for everyone. You need to learn, you need to build the skills. There's no one, there's no one particular company to support you. Yes, you may have, you can go for the documents which are available. You need to browse it, you have to learn it and then use all this component here. So this is very important to really like, okay, here, if you are going for some paid version, yes, you get the support from the paid company, the companies who is, uh, uh, from whom like, you know, like, uh, you know, buying the software, you can go for it then. Should have programming skill. Yes, obviously here, if you want to go for the Selenium, specifically the, the web driver recommended, even for the, the grid and all, uh, what are the three components you saw, the programming skill is required in all that case. So some of the guys who join here in this particular workshop, they may be wondering like, okay, now I am a, from the QTP background. It's, a, it's another uh, uh, testing tools and one of the popular tool again. So what are the advantages of Selenium over the QTP? So let me give the brief, because although this is not the my agenda for as a, about QTP is not my agenda, but to tell you like, okay, if you are from the QTP background, I would like to tell you like, what are the advantages of Selenium are there over the QTP now? So uh, let us see that first. Uh, I told you here, that's the first thing first and very important. And that is Selenium is open source and freely available. Now, when you say Selenium is open source and freely available, obviously the choice is yours now, whether to go for the paid version or whether to go for the free version. But QTP is also, but QTP is a commercial now. So if you want to have certain application to be tested, uh, you want certain technical support, vendor support, go for the QTP then. Highly extensible. Selenium is highly extensible. You can connect to whichever the browser, whichever programming language, very good benefit like you can say, and it has certain limitation in the, in the case of QTP here. Run tests on multiple browser here in the case of Selenium, but if you go for the QTP, it run the test in the certain browsers like Firefox, Internet, Explorer, Chrome, and all. So there are certain browser where QTP is running efficiently. Here it supports multiple operating system. Now, let me tell you, this is the most important feature. This is the most important benefit because nowadays, when you are developing any web application, Definitely you like to check on all the browser, all the operating system, all the types of devices, then only you can go for the testing. Otherwise, okay, I say I, I, it works only on the OS. I can, I can test only on the way, oh, Windows OS. I can install on the Windows OS, but don't know like whether it is going to work on the Mac or not, whether it's going to work properly on uh, some other, uh, uh, you know, uh, Unix based operating system or not. We want to check it and you want to install it. We need to have a, we need to check it because we are not sure about it in that case then. So our, our web testing, whenever you are going for the, our web application and that web application should be tested across a browser as well as on the different types of devices. Then only we go for the, that, that, that's, that's the benefit, that's what we should be doing the testing. Otherwise, what's the benefit of testing? If you are not testing it on the different devices and the different browser now. Selenium supports mobile devices also. All the types of mobile devices it supports. I have already been like there's a one component like you know APM. If you go for the Python APM, APM will allow you to go for the mobile application testing. And there is a library which is a Selenium library in the APM now. So specifically those who are from the uh, you know those who like to go for the mobile automation testing, 
and they can go for this, uh, you know, specifically the Android one or the iPhone, they can go for the one of the powerful tool which is available called APM. And it has a Python based library av available as a Selenium library and allows you to test your mobile devices also. Very good, like mobile application, I'm talking devices, I'm talking about here, mobile application, not the devices, okay? Mobile application specifically. And then that helps you a lot. That's the APM is for specifically mobile application. But yes, those who would like to go for that. So there's a Selenium library included in the APM. QTP supports mobile application testing automation like iOS and Android using some solution called HP solution that is a HP mobile center. Yes, it is there. It's a separate, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a proprietary of HP here. Now, Selenium execute test while the browser is minimized. And in the QTP case, it need to have the application under the test to be visible on the desktop here. So here, uh, uh, it is not necessary that you should be, you know, keeping some uh, uh, desktop open here and then only you should do testing, nothing required in the Selenium. Your browser is minimized, still you can do the testing. And you do not require to check also. And it will give the report uh, after testing it. And you can see the code, okay, it is tested or not. So that kind of, that report can be checked. You will be seeing it practically all this thing now. Selenium allows you to execute the test parallelly. Uh, here there's a uh, execution in the parallel is possible, but using the quality center, which is again a paid product. Go for it. If you have the something like the license thing you want, go for it then. Now, this was our, the introduction part of our Selenium. I tried to cover the basic or most important part like what the Selenium is all about here. I hope you must have understood now what the Selenium is, when to go for Selenium, the benefits of Selenium and the various components of Selenium here, who developed the Selenium, the Selenium ID specifically, I say like, if you do not have the programming skill, you can go for the Selenium ID here, the benefits of Selenium ID, the limitations of Selenium IDs, and also we saw some Selenium or RC component that is the remote control component. We saw a little bit architecture about the RC component, whether it is to be, whether you should go for RC component or not. So there's a choice now. So here, recommendation here is Selenium Web Driver. Although I took uh, all the four component, I took all the four component here, which is, which is a part of Selenium again, but what is the recommended? So my recommendation here, is Selenium Web Driver. And here we'll be using the Selenium Web Driver only. Then uh, we also saw the Selenium Web Driver uh, basic architecture, Selenium Grid, what are the, when to go for Selenium Grid now? So there is a question for you. When to go for Selenium Grid? Is it for testing, unit testing? Or for the, or you can say the, uh, or, or you like to go for the test suit here? Okay, so would you like to go for the, when, when to go for Selenium grid now? That's a question for you. So, so let me tell you, you should be going for the Selenium grid when you like to test, you want to do parallel testing. And that too, test suit. At the same time, you want to test many more web component. And there you go for Selenium grid. Very, very fast. But again, like if you are going for a testing uh, many more component at the same time, then only you go for Selenium grid. So this was what we saw in the case of uh, the Selenium grid here. Then the, the summary here is like the Selenium supports, uh, we saw like it supports the various platforms it supports the various operating system, various browsers, supports multiple programming languages. It has a great testing framework available. There are so many things we saw in the, in the introduction part of the Selenium here now. And now also we saw the, the various, the limitations of Selenium and the benefits of Selenium or the KTP. Now the part comes is like doing the hands-on part now. Now, when it's hands-on session, obviously we need to understand what is required 
tell me which are the component we require to do when you want to go for the selenium uh, uh, web driver here specifically i'm talk targeting here selenium web driver i'm not targeting selenium id here because obviously selenium id is a separate component that i think is very easy for you to go and then uh, do the testing of your site but here my major or we can say the main objective of this session is to go for selenium web driver which is supporting to the various browsers and the platform now which language obviously python so here the driver here installed is in the python only so what is re uh, required here is the you require to have a you require to have what the component uh, or you can say uh, uh, the python first first thing is required a python to be installed the second thing is the selenium driver so let me show that practically and also from where to do what that also i'll tell you now so uh, if any question here before we go for the hands on so let me know because uh, here i'm not coming back to the theory part because this is what i wanted to say in the theory here and here it is more about the hands on so if any question in the theory any you can just write the question uh, in the chat and i will try to answer it there okay let me give the because i say like i'll be coming back to here so the only thing is let me like uh, here that that what we should do we should have a, a great testing team here if you want to go for the the web automation testing and specifically the developer here the manual testing is and what the automation testing is and the differences between both so so you may go for that and i said about the selenium selenium is to automate the browsers and that's what you are doing it now so you are going to automate every step using the browser now so again the the site which is available that is selenium hghq.org this is a site where you'll get the the various thing about the various api part uh, and you may browse it and look at what exactly the selenium hq site is uh, and you may get all the things like the basic components and all available and the various api for the python uh, again i'm trying to skip theory now because we already discussed this uh, theory and the, the history part but i kept it in the notebook so that in case you miss something you can also see the in the hands on like right? you can see in the notebook also this is my uh, the 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 notebook which is connected to anaconda so i'm using the anaconda tool here so those who join first time let me tell you like for all the python um, uh, hands on i am using anaconda so those who are not familiar with the anaconda or the python i will recommend them to go for the previous uh, workshop where i already covered how to install the python and how the the important part here now that is the selenium web driver now having the python anaconda see let me it is not like mandatory to have anaconda for a selenium but this is my preferable tool like i can i'm using it uh, uh, for all my python scripting here i find like here i can have everything on on a one a one notebook itself so i can create the complete selenium hands on in one notebook here so how to install very simple in python we have a, a command called pip command and there's one more command called easy underscore install command these commands will help you to install the selenium quickly so you will not require to put any effort you can install from command prompt also like if you already install the python uh, not maybe not in the anaconda but somewhere else there you can just use a command pip install selenium that's it now remaining part will be done by the internet and you know this package the pip command itself we we'll look for the all the you know the the link connected to this web driver then so the first thing is like you should be having the the selenium uh, which is to be installed first and once you have selenium installed i'm not installing once again because i already have the install uh, i already installed the selenium here and uh, it takes certain times to install and once you are, once you install you can go for the next part then what you should do after having the selenium installed then so let's say you already install the selenium i will uh, 
suggest you to go for testing it now. So here I'll show you, uh, I'll just insert the one more cell here so that you can uh, uh, test it once you install the Selenium before we even write the script here. So one cell here I'm writing here now in the notebook and showing you like how to check whether the Selenium is installed properly or not. So you can try to import the library that is Selenium. Now, this is the library which is uh, which is need to be tested first. So first you check what, uh, whether I can import the Selenium or not. Okay, check it. If you can import, then check the DIR <clears throat> and there's no error. It means you can go ahead and check the DIR of Selenium. And here, why I'm looking for the DR? DR is a listing the various component, various uh, classes which are written in the in the in the module Selenium here. Now this is the Python model I'm talking about here. So this is developed using the Python. So this is the Python API. So let us see what the DI says now to us. Uh, DI says that it has a uh, uh, some built-in attributes available as well as there are there's a very important component called web driver. Now, we are using the Selenium for the web driver. That's the major focus here. So what does web driver include now? So let us go for and look at the Selenium web driver because we should know before we even do the hands-on part. This is the most important part of this API that is the Selenium API here. And that is web driver. So what this web driver include? Why I'm asking you to look at it because when I'm using certain component, of the web driver, you should know that from where it has come now. So let me do these web drivers uh, is having everything, all the APIs. Now here we talk about API. Okay, so here all the APIs which allows you to communicate to the various devices, various browser, various platform. So here there is a solution available. This is the most now. Till now we were talking about like you know the the theory part. Now you can see practically what this web driver API include now. So this web driver API include many more things. And what is that? You can see some of the, the, the drivers names which are there because here we're talking about all these are the web drivers here. And the most important web driver which will be using in our hands-on, one of the famous and one is the Firefox. This one, this is the one, one very important one, okay? And the second one is the Chrome. Now why Firefox and the Chrome? There should be reason, right? So obviously most of the web, web application, if you ask like, you know, if you ask like uh, the user, which is the most popular browser? You know, we did an analysis, we did a survey. Do you know which is the most popular browser at global level? And the answer is Chrome, Google Chrome. And that's why in case you're using the Chrome, go for it. And which is the another most popular browser which is available on most of the OS other than the Chrome, Firefox. Let me know this Firefox is developed using the, again, a Python uh, based technology. So that's why also is another popular and it is by default. So let me tell you specifically Firefox is mostly used because again, like you do not require to even download and install some other driver when you have the Firefox installed. It's supposed directly by default when you install the Selenium, when you install the Selenium model, you have a Firefox support available. And that's the benefit here. Yeah, you need to a little bit setting here, but then it is by default support is available. That's a very, uh, and this, that, that is something we'll see like, you know, how it is useful. And yes, there are other other browser also. And for uh, for other browser also, let me do based on the, based on the OS, based on the browser, you require to install the specific driver for it. Because, you know, there should be someone who can communicate to your component, communicate to, a web component, your devices, and whichever is there. So without the driver, you will not able to drive your car. You will not able to drive your web application. You will not able to do testing. So your testing will be done by 
you know the driver is a one of the important component here allows you to you know test your web application here and we'll be seeing how we are going to use. so here i'm going to show you like okay there are many more but we'll be using some important driver here now uh, we started with uh, the first thing is the web driver so first step is like when you have a if you want to test it you can go for any website let me tell you it is all independent now whichever the website you want to start with and check it okay like now uh, maybe i will go for the simple one first so so i will write a some small script here first step is like i would like to just open the the one of the the website using this now so oh okay yeah already done here so one of the website could be uh, jkdss.com this is what i want to run it now very very simple any any you can open any website here now and this is like browser i say here is a driver again when i say browser is a driver again so it's a driver object okay so browser is a the web driver object now this is a firefox web driver object we need to check okay later whether i can open using this code whether i can open the firefox or not let us check it by the get command before we even proceed further so let us do it so i can either run it from here directly or i can run this program and run it separately also so by the way can you, let me test it now let us check it whether it is going to work or not so but then i i think there will be some challenge in terms of sharing the screen now so i will require to uh, switch to the uh, sharing screen that is a uh, to the you know uh, uh, just let me do that part here uh the the screen which already started i had to show it uh, like uh, here it, it's already started the firefox so this is the site which has opened automatically okay gktss.com into the firefox you can see this it has already opened now okay and it's still doing certain action what i did i did nothing i simply use a import statement and say get command and the browser is open but it is not going to close it unless and until i say driver dot close or browser dot close so this is that's why this site will be open now so this is what you can see here i hope the screen is visible now here is a, a firefox component and uh, this firefox will allow you to see the the things like okay this is a site which is open in the firefox now okay so i hope and then yeah this was a statement i executed and and that's why i could open so again i had to see like whether my my screen is uh, visible to you or not i am going to switch to the another screen that is from the coding so uh, i may go for the the another solution in case if i had to go and uh, to and pro and that is the desktop solution okay so now i think uh, i'm coming back to the code so what i did here and you can also try it out to open any website any website first thing is to install the browser uh, to have a installation of selenium uh, drivers the pip command and then uh, just test one of the site but yes there may be a something to be missing in case something is missing there is a troubleshooting part maybe the gecko drivers or something uh, specifically for windows os you have to check uh gecko drivers and all other component so uh, uh check it like in case something missing you may get some troubleshooting may be required but here this is very simple to go for now this is what we saw here now next thing that what after the opening the site what you can do is so you got the object now you got the object that is the the browser is your web driver object afterward the things are very simple now things are very simple what things are simple means like now you have there is a choice what do you want to let's say you want to go for the the site like uh, you want to check it whether there is a there is a title uh, available or not you want to check test it, assert assert like let's say you open the yahoo site here and you want to check whether there is a yahoo site is uh, uh, the the title of the browser is yahoo or not or you have some jkdss now you want to check whether the title is jkdss innovation is there or not so what is the title you can check it now so how do you check it and how do you know like which are the component so these are all connected to the browser now so let me show you what this uh, browser include before we go ahead 
So here I'm going to list the browser also. Uh, maybe I can show it by commenting this section so that I can show only that part which is important. So you understand then from where this all, uh, this is the object, this is the object of our web driver. So let us see what this uh, browser is all about. And this is a, it's, it's a name, you can give whatever the name you want. Okay, so again, the, the component here, it has come because I have say get command. And uh, that's why the, the, uh, the screen has modified. So again, I need to go back and open the, the my screen. Okay, so there's no need to stop. Actually, I can come back and uh, share the screen. I hope this screen is visible. You can see the, because I say there's a, a web driver dot Firefox, See what's the what this command webdriver.firefox is doing. It is opening the Firefox, not the website. Let me tell you, it is not for why because I commented this browser.gate and I was just thinking like, okay, I can see the browser now. The objective is like, let me browser is here is just the object, and this object is very important for us to observe and uh, and use it because here this gives you the the various. Uh, commands or various API which you can use it. What you can do with the help of this driver now. This uh, object is having the various method already available and you can explore this method. Before you use it, let us explore the various method which are available now. Now this is Python is, uh, is an object oriented scripting language. It has all the built-in method available now. So what are that uh, methods are available? Like there's a back method in case you want to go back and uh, to the browser, you have closed methods. So you can close it browser.close. So I can do that close. So there are various, uh, you know, you can say APIs or various uh, methods already available in the case of browser, which is an object of web driver dot Firefox here right now. So very important to look at it because I do not want to, you know, uh, to remember you. I don't want you to remember these things. Why? Because not needed, because there are uh, hundreds of APIs are available and not a single developer can remember all these API without practicing it every day. And we don't practice every day, right? So what we can do is we can see it. Okay, now, uh, you know, what are the APIs are available? Now I'd like to check some API and how to use it. There's a help available for that. For example, uh, I would like to check the one of the API could be, yes, you can see like what other things are there uh, because while practicing, we'll be using this API only. For example, the, and it's very simple and very straightforward. It's an English uh, language API. It's just saying like, okay, minimize the window, maximize the window, and the name itself says like what exactly it is going to do. Even you can see like, you know, the, the, the element names which are there, like find element by class name. I hope like by name only what it is saying, we can understand like find element by ID. Now these API will be using it. And why I'm discussing it is very important because if I'm using it, I should know from where I'm taking it now. So these are the, your driver component. So you can explore each and every API and there is a document also available. If you visit the site called Selenium site, and uh, if you just see, there is a document for each and every element. This element, and you can see like, okay, when to use what, when to go for by name, when to go for tag name, when to go for XPath, all these things you can see. So here in this two days workshop, like today as well as there's a next day, next workshop, we'll be exploring more. And the next workshop is most important workshop, let me do. The, the, the workshop, which is coming up on the 5th of September, that day I'll be doing more hands-on and I'll be taking the very important component in the, the next workshop. And that is, do you know that? That is the X path. Because that is something which is a little bit, uh, or you can say a little bit critical to understand the various element and how to exactly find out the path of that element. And that is what you are going to learn in the next workshop itself. But today, we are going to understand the various, uh, the basic of the, the this particular uh, Selenium component and also try to use the basic APIs and see like, okay, how does it work? So here, I hope you understand like from where to get what. So this is something to, to explore. 
And if you want to know the help here, you can definitely look at the help here. How to get the help? Uh, you can get the help function. Now, which browser uh, function do you like to check it? Uh, maybe a simple one, you can look at it. Browser that uh, you have uh, something like back. Okay, a very simple one. Back itself, it says what exactly it is. So uh, let us do that and see what exactly the, okay, so the problem here is again, I had to switch back to this, uh, uh, okay, resume share. Okay, uh, it's very fast now, okay, fine. So now I can see, uh, I could have commented this uh, prayer, browser then, but then I could not see the back, uh, okay. See how the help is there now. Help is there like what the back is, back method of Selenium uh, is for, it goes one step backward in the browser history, that's it. Very simple and straightforward to understand. Like if any anything you are using, you can check it. Let us, let us say in our program, we have a, something called get method. We just saw it like how the get method is there now. So here you can check the, the method like get method itself and very straightforward to see like, okay, how does the get method works now? So get method will tell you like, okay, this is the way. Okay, let me again uh, uh, come back to the resume share and I'm coming back to this now. Okay, so what, what is that gate method is and we're using it now and very simple very straightforward gate method is for to access the what lower the web page in the current browser session that's it whichever the uh, browser session the, the the you are going to load it that's what we're done we did what we just say gate and the website whichever the url is right now you open the gkdc.com you can open whichever the url you want to open I hope you're understanding the basic of this like API also, because very important for us to, you know, before we use this API, you should understand, okay, the purpose of each and every API. And once you understand, you can use it. So here I use a gate API. Then, okay, what this browser dot title, let me do the driver is having some built-in uh, attributes also. So there are something, some attributes are like method attributes and some of them are the data attribute. Now this browser, the title is going to get the directly title from the website and you can check it whether their title is there or not. Assert is a command. Assert is a Python command to test. Is there a true or false, whether it is there or not. You can just find out. If it is there, it's true, fine. Okay, that's fine. Then you can go ahead for the next thing then. So here there's a next thing that is a, if you want to find the element by name, if we have to check whether that element name uh, P is there or not. If it is there, then only it will open. Otherwise, you will not able to get the element here. So again, every time you need to check in your website whether that element name P is there. Also, we have to check the name here in the browser. So how to check? That also we are going to check it now. So firstly, uh, you know, before we go ahead and check the name and all, let us. Uh, run this. Uh, okay. So this is a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I think before that. Let us have some simple one. So I have some various example because again, like I don't want to go for the keys right now. Uh, okay, so I think uh, even I want to show like, you know, how to go for the Chrome one, the Chrome browser and all, but then this is going to take a lot of time. I'm just thinking which one to be taken first. Okay, so here what I'll do, uh, here I'll write a code itself. So that's that way the things will be more easy for us to you know understand also. So I'm going to write one by one. So here I say the browser dot get command and uh, we could open the site now. We can also see the browser, browser dot close here. That's something which is built in. You can see there dot close. You can just use it like this. So this is a this is something like to provide. But before that, I will also like to add the time now. So how to add that? There's a time method is there. That is, a, there's a, you can use a time dot sleep command somewhere in this case. So uh, maybe I can show you can use a model like time. And in case you want to wait for a few seconds there, that way you can add it. And uh, and then you can come back to this. So here, uh, you, that's your that's something another component that is a model you can say import time. And you can say time dot sleep for uh, let's say for uh, uh, one second or two second, and then you can run this script once again. Now I already removed the help part, and so let us see how does it work now. And we are going to share the screen one more times. So let us see how does it work. 
So uh, I have to share the screen uh, one more times, new share. So the site is opening. So in this case, it has already opened in the Firefox and uh, uh, the site is there in the Firefox here. Uh, it has opened the Firefox, so yeah. And then, uh, but in this, here what is going to happen, let's say, because you can see there are lots of Firefox already open. And, uh, but here, what is going to happen here, it is like, uh, uh, it is allowing to close us after, like after two seconds. Now, which of the, you know, the browser, it started running and all, after two seconds of time, it is going to close. So because we put the time component here, we say time uh, dot sleep and say that, okay, after two seconds, it should close. So we have to check it like which one is going to close now because I have already run this several times. So it, it, I have a, a few more uh, Chrome already open. So, but let me tell now this time, after two seconds, it is going to close whichever is the active one. I may require to close some of the Firefox here because it should not happen like I have several Firefox right now. So I'm just going to close some of them uh, to avoid the, the next, uh, okay. And then maybe we can one more times run it. Okay. So here, uh, one thing is very straightforward that let me do here that how does it work? The the very simple one, I hope, okay, okay. Again, I have to share the screen now. So the point was here to close it, okay? Close the browser. So, but this is done by the simple command browser.close here now, right? And now what else you can do is, you have a several command to do like, okay, you want to assert something here, like uh, in this case, the title one, we have to check the title. Oh, okay, browser.title, first before we before we go ahead and check it, what is the browser title? So that also we can do it uh, by even uh, just putting the browser, okay, I will just, uh, you know, put this out because this is not needed. Uh, browser dot, what is the component? So I want to print it and see, okay, I will run this also. So this is already a component available and you want to print it, you can print it here before you assert and check what is the title is all about. Okay, so now uh, I, would like to, uh, I would like to save this program now. Let me save this program so that you understand how does it work it then, uh, how you can run it from outside also. So write file and then uh, this is our, uh, the first program that is uh, to check the Selenium Oh, this is for what gktcs dot py. Okay, so this is just the name. You can write whatever the name you want. Now I'm just saving this so that I can use it. Selenium underscore gktc dot com, and I'm going to run it from. You can run it from anywhere. Insert cell below, and then I will be. I'll be running from here now. This time. Okay, Selenium gktcs. Uh, because I have several names written, so Selenium. Okay, so let me type it only because it's coming GKT. Okay, so I'm just running this and see how does it work now. Let us test it. Okay, I have to go there and switch back to the new share here. It is uh, the Firefox, which is getting open. But this time you will be able to see like uh, the output also, because this time what I did is, is, is like uh, I opened the site and also wanted to check the, the output. So uh, at least I have the idea, okay, that whatever I'm doing is and whether I'm, I'm getting the output or not. If I can see it, yes. Now you can see the, the title here. 
this is the output now maybe you must have not observe the what happened in the back end because that was not needed what is actually you can observe is like the driver could find out the title of the the website here you can change the website and then because now this i already open several times you can open the maybe the yahoo.com that's fine because maybe you can try this out and see how does it work now so now again i'm running this program okay overriding and running this program now and this time let us see how does it work again switching to the new share here now this time because uh, there is a yahoo site so i i will be able to check it which one okay so what happened here now let me tell you it has open and close also so there is a need of delay otherwise uh, uh, but then the result will be available to you okay so i have to put the delay now i have to put delay but the, what you can see the result is after running this uh, selenium underscore <clears throat> gkdcs.py i can see the title is yahoo india yahoo is uh, in the beginning available and this is what way i can get the various component so so here I, now if i want to uh, let's say assert that's a command which is a separate command whether it is available or not yes you can check it whether it is available or not this time i'm going to add one more thing that is uh, that is whether this yahoo which you can see already that there is a yahoo already so this is in in is like in is going to check it in the browser or title whether there is a yahoo available or not if it is gkdcs.com and in that my title name is gkdcs so it is going to check whether gkdcs is available or not so this can be checked by a simple assert command and what is going to happen if it is there let's say if it is there what is going to happen that also we are going to check the element then then we are going to do the next part okay that's a that's a separate so first we'll just have the assertion here now so this is what this is one way to check whether there is a yahoo title or not now i'm going to run this uh, i already overwrite this now going to run it and see the output also okay so now running this again one more times uh, going to switch to the the new uh, browser here but oh i did not add the the time delay because to switching from the from here is uh, the like if i had to show you the output i had to add the time delay then so uh, that's a, that's a challenge now so i to uh, without that i will not able to show the the output here but then you could see like if it has run successfully it means it means there is a title but if it is not let's say there is no yahoo title available okay so let me add the time component here now so that i can show the so time component will help me to check it okay so before i close it i would like to add the time dot slip now i close other thing come because here i did not add any dependency or waiting time nothing so time dot slip for maybe a uh, 5 seconds so that we can observe it so here it is just going to test it there nothing we are doing we are just testing whether there is a component yahoo so if it is not there it is going to say false so we like to check the false also okay before we so let us try something like a uh, uh, you know uh, let us say the component like uh, lower case yahoo whether it is going to work or not now we saw the upper case yahoo now we are trying let's say we type a lower case yahoo now let us test it okay so that we have we are clear whether it is testing correctly or not let us test it now because it has to match exactly and this time i'm going to resume uh, share the screen whichever is going to come because here it takes time to switch uh, the screen so but then uh, sharing this screen uh, will require to how the the new screen uh, and that is uh, this this time you can see the the yahoo site is open and, uh, and now because we added the time delay that allows you to see that okay the site is open yahoo here and now here you are you are asserting whether there is a yahoo but then i use lower case yahoo remember now so it is going to check whether the title this yahoo lower case is available or not if not then what happen let us check it 
So meanwhile, I'm going to check that also. Yes. So I, I will now share the new screen here again to tell you like what happened in the back end. So here you can see the there is an error. And what is that error? Assertion error. Very straightforward, very simple. And the assertion error says, and it's an exception, right? It says that no, this lowercase Yahoo is not available now. So now you can change it and see again. And now here you will see, okay, there's a uppercase Yahoo and modify it. And once it is done successfully, again, now again, sharing the screen. So new share will, uh, because now it is going to uh, open it with a delay, so no problem. So every time I'm uh, opening the browser and but then this time what I did is I'm able to run on next browser and after five seconds it's automatically previous browser already got closed now. Now this five seconds is going to wait it. That's why I'm able to sh show it to you. Okay, so this is open and now what is happening again? Again, I'm coming back to my code and seeing, okay, what happened here? And you can see that this time there is no assertion error. So this this is way this is the way also you can test your each and every component and this was very simple component to understand now. What else you can do it? So obviously it is more about exploring. It is more about exploring the portal and various component here now. More you explore, more you understand now. So here what we did we are, we check the Yahoo title and now we will try to find out the element. How do you find out the element by various components? So we have to go into uh, check the various way to find the element by, for the Google, there's a different element name for, for uh, uh, Yahoo, we have different element name. So why not to test it? You can check any website now. So, uh, but from where this component and from where I can come to know that whether in the browser, there's an element called name P or not. So from where the P element has come now. So let me show you before even I execute it, I need to test it, whether the search element, like if I'm searching the element like uh, by P, the what is that element? It is the search box. So first I need to check the search box. So what is the element name also I have to check it? Because maybe that element name got modified. So before we go ahead and check it, so, okay. Okay, so let me again uh, go back to the Yahoo here and check it whether there is a, uh, there is a, you know, the search box and that search box name name is p or not so here i'm going to share the new screen to you and uh, show you like uh, whether there's a element search box this one and here how to how to check it there is a there is a inspect element here you have right click most of you guys from the testing uh, they know like there's a there's a browser if you click there's a browser and there's an inspect element now if you see the inspect element in this case And what you can do is you can select this selector here, this one, pick element, and check the component. What is that component? Search box component. Now, when you search, when you see the component here, you can see something interesting start. I'm looking for this component now. Okay, I selected this component here and looking for this component. And what is the name here? What are the details? I have to check it. What is the name here? What is the name of this component? If I, I can find out, then only I can use it. I should know. So there are various things here. You can see in the, when you have the component name, you have various things available. And here you can find out the details about it. What are the element now? What this element includes? Look at this element like that. One by one, you have to look at it. So this will allow you to see the various components. So what is the what is the name here? You can see there is a lowercase letter P is there. Name P is there. I hope you can uh, observe this uh, element name is P here. So there is one of the things which I am observing here. The element name is P here. I hope this is visible to all of you now. Now let us. So it means this Yahoo search box is having the element name P. So I can search it by name P now. So let us go back again and. Uh, now here I'm coming back to my script again. So it means the Yahoo is having the element name P. 
So I could get the element object. So, okay, now I hope you can see the screen now where I can show you what this element include. This is object now. So if I can have the element, what this element includes. So now this time what I'll do, I will uh, uh, put the slip time as a, uh, I will just uh, comment this section of the slip time because I will be running this in backend and show you like what this element include now. So uh, let me show that quickly what this element include. Okay, I had to run this here itself. So it may switch to the browser, but again, I'm going to resume the switch uh, and show the, uh, show, show the, uh, this particular run uh, Selenium, and you can see the this has run executed now. And uh, because okay, I, I uh, if it is not coming here, so I have to print it. Then in that case, if the DR is because it's it's a complete program, so I should have put the print. Uh, then only it, I can see the output here. Uh, so let me show the DR of element now, so that we understand okay what is happening now. Okay, so I'm overriding this command again, overriding this script again, and running it one more times. Uh, again, I had to come back and resume and see uh, what's happening is running. So if the star is gone, it means it has run successfully. I, this time I have removed the, uh, remove this, uh, the time because I want to show you something that is what this element object includes. These are our object now. So it includes many more things. You can see there are various uh, things which are available in the element now. When I'm saying the element is an object, which is uh, which is the object of what? It is the object of the Yahoo browser. Uh, you know, it's like we are ex uh, accessing the, the search box uh, uh, by this element named P. Now, for this Yahoo browser, what all thing you can do is, you can have the search box. Now this, we find out the search box name by name P now, we identified that because if you want to search something in the Yahoo or in the Google or somewhere else, you need to say, okay, what, where to go now, where, what you want to do is like, you want to go ahead and type something, search something using the browser itself, using our, the command or API itself, how to do that. So this is what we are going to do it. And before that, I'm, I'm just showing you like what this element is all about. So here you can see, the various API. It has an API like send keys, size, submit, text. These all these are the data attributes, and there are built-in. See what it includes. These are the built-in attributes. So whatever you see, the bill, the double underscore, we don't require to look at it. Whenever you see the DIR, is a listing of all the attributes. So which attribute to observe, which attribute not to observe? See attribute which you have to observe is these attributes only. Uh, these are the attributes we have to observe, like from here. So here, these attributes you should observe. What it includes now. It includes various things now. So uh, what I say here, the DR of element, which is a uh, object of this complete browser dot element. So various methods or API, which are built in. We are not writing this. These are already available. And what we can do is you can send the keys, you can submit the keys, you can get the help, you can get the tag name, you can get the text names and all those things. So, so all these are already there. You can get the ID also. So you, what are the API you can see? Find the element by name, find the element by link text, all these are already available as an object now. So what is our next step now? Next step is to send something to the, the element which we identify and that is uh, sending the, maybe the search thing like here, uh, I'm using one more API that is uh, sending the keys here. Let's say I'm sending this one. Uh, you can send anything. It's not necessary that you should be sending the, so here I'm going to say in the, some Selenium HQ or you may send something else later on. But then here I am using one more API which is available in the keys. So uh, yeah, that I need to use it. Otherwise I'll get the error here. Again, the other API. So again, let me tell you, these are all predefined. You are not writing your own API here. In this case, it is just the predefined API. You just need to know uh, the API name, the purpose of it. And once you understand the purpose, you can use it then. So here we are going to understand, okay, selenium.webdriver.common.keys. So how do you send the, the, the keys or the data uh, to the various, the element here now? So here I'm going to send something. So here, how to send it? There is a method available here for that, and that is a uh, that is a send keys now. And one more thing here, I'm why using this key that, that also I'll show you here. I'm using it here because 
I would like to, you know, uh, send something to the search box to the to the element which we already selected. Now, how do we select it? We selected by the name P, the element name search box, and there we are saying, okay, Selenium HQ is just the any. Actually, this is to uh, get the the help of Selenium HQ. You may write something else. You may something maybe the GKTCS or if you want to search something else, that's your choice. You search it whatever you want. So, uh, and then you are going to send the return here. So, keys dot return is go is just like a enter key. Is is going to enter also. So, if I say GKTCS innovations, okay, or just GKTCS, fine, no problem. It is going to search it by the the GKTCS name now. And let us see how uh, what happened now. Just override it, and it is all testing one by one. And you can see how simple it is like you do not require to write a uh, you know, more lines of code here. Just write one line, test it, write one line, test it. And then gradually you can add the lines here. <clears throat> so Python is something we say that it's an interpreted language. As it is an interpreted language, that's the benefit here. Why I recommend Python to everyone is something like, it's very easy to learn for everyone. And it's an interpreted and you know, interactive language. Why I'm saying it's interpreted and interactive and the high level language, so obviously they can see like, you know, I'm able to interact with you because the browser is interacting with me. Your each and every, uh, uh, even the, this ID which I'm using is interacting with me, giving me immediate response. If there's an error, it's telling me, okay, there's an error. So this way I can check, okay, if there's an error, where there's a problem, I can check line by line here. So that's what the interpreter means, line by line execution. So let us do this now and run it. Let us, uh, it's just like a fun, you can see like, the language is a fun here and this time I'm going to, uh, uh, let me tell you like what's happening here. I had to share the screen. So I'm just going to share the, the new screen here and uh, let us see uh, if it is uh, getting shared. Okay, so resume share and uh, <clears throat> so things like, the browser I had to open. I, I did not, this time what happened, like the the time uh, I did not add it. That's a, that's a challenge. So I could have uh, <clears throat> added the time, uh, but uh, okay, fine. What I will do here, I will add the time to show it. Uh, otherwise the result will not be visible to you. So this time again, I'm modifying this code because to show the, okay, I can uh, skip the, print now because this this was just for the demo so this is this is i comment commented now and uh, yeah time dot slip should be there and uh, then only i can okay this time uh, time dot slip i will add it uh, after uh, you know everything done not before okay after and then maybe for 2 seconds rather than uh, uh, for uh, more than 2 the, the 2 seconds is more than enough for us to see it so let us execute one more time because we we could not check it the result uh, we did not uh, we could uh, i could not show it because it takes certain time to open the browser and check it okay and uh, also to show the screen it takes certain time so i'm sharing the screen one more times here new shares and uh, let me see what's happening which particular browser it is opening now because there are multiple browsers okay so i i can close this uh, the window which are already done yeah one more thing like we have to check uh, uh because here i'm switching back here and there and i have to check it whether it identify the element or not where it, it is going to open certain signs. So I have to add certain pause in case your command is running before the before the browser open. Then also there's a challenge. So we have to check it. If there is an error, we can find out. If there's no error, it's fine then. It's working then. So all this can be checked. We don't require to worry, okay, whether it's working or not. If there's an error, if it is not opening, if the if if Yahoo is not uh, in case that the element is not identified, in case it is not sending the keys here all this can be checked so because i don't know whether it is working or not so i can check it here then where i can check it in my in the in the in the in the output itself if the output is running perfectly let's say my output 
uh, has run perfectly. There is a there is an output here. So it means it is executing, right? If it is not okay, so it is going to take some time now. In case it is not open, let I, I have to check it here that whether it is taking the opening the browser or not. And you can try with other browser also afterwards. Some of the browser I may require to close it because there are two to three active browser available. Uh, sometimes I also get confused. Okay, which one is the browser? Okay, so. Yeah, meanwhile, I will also request you to uh, please share the your feedback of about uh, your understanding about this particular particular session. Yeah, the feedback link is already shared. So it is. This is like there are two to three browsers. And if it is running, okay, so it has uh, done, but there's a one more thing here, and that is uh, uh, that generally we should do it is like, uh, we are we're done that assertion also we can check it in case we want to check whether it has, the result is found or not. So a lot of thing can be done. And uh, yes, okay, so this is to tell you like, uh, how does it work? Because there's no error, it means it has already executed. Okay, so I hope you can see the screen. So if there is an error, it means it will not exist. So it was just like a simple thing here. Like I am doing what? I'm just sending the key GKTCS. Yes. That's it. Nothing much here. So this you can try it. You can say any, anything here. Maybe you can try to send other command and uh, it's fine. This is just to You can search anything here. I will do what? I will put the time not slip uh, before also so that each and everything can be seen here. Because it takes some time. Uh, okay, I have Yahoo only, right? That's fine, Yahoo search only. It takes some time to open the browser through the net. It all depends on the internet speed also. Okay, so I'm again one more time running it. I'm going to check the browser and whether it's working or not. And if it is working, it's great. Yeah, but this time, yes, it has opened and I can, uh, but it has, after opening it is closed also because uh, the thing is it was for only two seconds. So I think what, what I could have done is like I put a more little more delay. Uh, so this time what I'll do, I'll put more delay now because two seconds is uh, very less, uh, for you to share the screen and opening the browser and everything simultaneously, it is it is taking some time. But then let me show you the result, how it comes for this particular program. I just modify the time this time so that, okay, there's a delay now. Now, now this time I will show the result also. There's, it has come uh, and I'm just sharing the screen now after the, it opens because uh, unless until, uh, you know, because there's a share screen option but the scarce here option works only when after a few seconds. That's a, that's a challenge for me. So, uh, yeah, but then again, I found like, you know, it has opened, it has uh, opened the windows and it has closed also because again, the time was the challenge for me. What I'm finding here, like the time I had to, uh, you know, share more here, not less than five seconds, not less than, uh, uh, you know, seven seconds. <clears throat> I will just add more time here because while sharing, it is taking more time. I need to make sure that the site open and then it goes to that particular, uh, uh, you know, the, the I, I, I should be able to then show it to the, the browser and the time it, uh, you know, I try to show it. Okay, now I will be able to because I added more time, okay. But then as soon as I share it, uh, the, the screen share stop. That's the challenge. So here, the time challenge. I hope you understood like how it is working. Uh, 
I have already shown this like. the share screen option i'm just opening it here one more times because uh, the result i wanted to show you so i'm just opening the share screen option to you but then the challenge here is when i'm trying to share the screen while it before it reflect here because it should be reflected here now here it is reflected then while doing that yeah you can see now this result is visible and now it has gone <laughs> So because I kept it only for a few seconds. Yeah, that's the result. That's the result. The result was only shown here. So this is the way it works. Okay, okay. I hope like you understand like how particular uh, you know keys can be said. Although uh, this time I I have done it for ten seconds, but let me tell you, all these things are happening so fast. Even the ten second, you just count it and goes. So that's what happening here. So if you really want to see the result, and if you are not able to see it, I am going to increase the time delay now for twenty seconds, so that you can see the result here. Uh, here I'm reducing, but then specifically for the uh, for the to show the result there. Here I I may have two seconds. That's fine. But the last result before I close it, or I can I can stop closing. That's also option available for me. In case, okay, that's the that's the last option. Like in case I don't want to close it, uh, that will uh, that will work then. That will that will allow me to show you the result, how it comes when we are sharing the screen now. So let me now this time share the screen, whichever is coming now. This is what happening here, and you can see the 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 scenario now, how the particular uh, keyword it has uh, uh, enter, and then now this time this time I did not close. So, uh, so I can see like okay, the particular query, particular keywords, uh, it has been searched, and now you can see the result also. So, why I'm showing this Selenium HQ here to tell you like there is a Selenium documents available, and you can visit the site Selenium HQ, and there you get the various documents about the Selenium. That's why I purposefully wanted to show the demo and show you like okay, there is a something related to Selenium which is available on the site. And this is where you get all the things related to Selenium now. I hope uh, this is helping you to understand like how the particular, uh, uh, you know, the Selenium API works here. Now here I'm going to, uh, you know, this is just to tell you the basic because today's our main agenda is to understand what the Selenium is, is all about and the basics. So I'm coming back to theory part here and. Uh, I'm going to conclude in a in a another five minute time. So, uh, what is that? Uh, okay. So again, resuming share to the new share part, and now coming back to my slides. So I hope you understood like how Python Selenium works here. We did the installation here, but then here you may require a certain help then yes you can maybe you can ping me or my number which is there you can also visit the site and uh, you will get more detail about it so uh, so let me do at the end like that what the selenium is all about here the selenium is something which we understood just now is a, is a is a something which is helping you to test your web application so it's a for web automation testing to test on the various browsers, to test on the you know various platform, various operating system, this is the solution available. It's a solution which is an open source solution available for wave automation testing. It is helping for us for uh, you know use any language, whichever the language, that's your choice. But I recommend Python. But I just say like it support multiple languages. And also, uh, if you look at the uh, I already discussed like what we are seeing, like like the benefits of Selenium and all. So so the best thing is like have a team who is a who is a developer team who is a, who is into the testing also and who understand the testing process and start testing your website. Okay, so that is what I will recommend for everyone. So before we even conclude for the today's session, I would like to tell you we have a. Uh, we have still one more workshop uh, for the Selenium for helping you guys 
And this workshop is going to be a more hands-on because the, we have just conducted the first workshop uh, of the Selenium here. I wanted to share the basic concept first. Now, I hope most of you guys are clear with the, what the Selenium is all about. And also uh, you're clear about like, you know, how to use a Selenium API library. But the next workshop is more about advanced portion now. Now what advanced uh, topic we are going to understand is also going to, we are going to locate the various element by using the XPath also, not only the XPath, but we are going to, uh, I'm going to cover some introduction to XPath here. So how to write XPath, because how to understand the XPath is also very important. So those guys who like to know the advanced feature of Selenium and specifically would like to access some special element, filling the forms, because that is what I want to take it. Like, how do you fill the form? Like even the login form, sign up form using the Selenium. So that all thing, and how do you access the specific element? How do you understand the tree structure of the XPath, that XML tree structure? How does it, like, what is the XML tree structure here? So all these things we are going to cover in the next workshop, which is already scheduled on the 5th September. Remember the date, 5th September. So those, that date, I'm going to cover the more about the Selenium hands-on. And there it is there, in case you would like to know more about the web driver, yes, maybe a little bit about web driver, like specifically the, the theory part, quick theory part of the web driver, that also I'll cover it. But here, uh, the next workshop is mo uh, more about hands-on and less about the theory. Uh, yeah, the theory is there, but that theory is for understanding the X path and writing the X path. So, uh, so that's our, the next workshop focus. And also various way you can access the element by using the various element like link text by tag name and with all these things we are going to understand with the hands-on here. So here I'm going to conclude for the today's session. I would like to thank you all for joining and attend this, this workshop through various mode, through the Zoom mode, as well as using the YouTube mode. I will request you to subscribe our channel because this, once you subscribe, you will get the notification for the, our upcoming workshop also. Because all these live workshop we are going to conduct for various, uh, uh, the IT professional, as well as now I'm going to start for the non-IT professional also. The workshop which I'm planning for the non-IT professional is for the business application. The uh, one more workshop which I have planned for data